Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. <clears throat> My name is Will. And today we bring you the modern Monday deck tech episode day. Ooh, it's exactly. modern Monday. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, we got some very cool decks to yes. talk about today. One that we picked, and well, actually, let me rephrase. One that a friend of ours picked uh, that he requested we do a deck tech on. Shout cool. out to our friend Andrew. We'll talk more about him in a little bit. But he's a man. Uh, we also have a community deck. Yeah. That we posted about on Instagram. We asked you guys, what modern deck do you want to see us do a deck tech on? Ooh, yeah. You guys responded. We have a bunch of answers. We picked one of those. Yeah. And uh, you'll be bringing that one to us, actually. I shall. And I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> and I'm sure most of you have heard of this, but it's still neat. It's a very good deck. Uh, yeah, it's still I mean, neat. It got even better recently. So with that, though, uh, we do want to mention, as always, our Patreon. Uh, if you have not checked out our Patreon, please go do so. The link is in the description. Uh, go check it out. Look at the tier goals. You don't have to donate if you don't feel like you, you need to or you don't feel like you should. That's okay. Uh, but if you would like to, we would obviously greatly appreciate yes. it. It helps build our community Absolutely. a little bit. And there's some ways that we can actually interact with you guys on there, and so we'd really like to be able to do that in the near future. Um, I'm trying to find um, the gentleman who suggested oh, I know the it. deck or the lady. Was it a I lady? I know it. You all know it right off hand? I forgot. You really man. need to you need to plan ahead on these things. Anyway, look, guys, um, I'm sorry. We also want to mention, uh, and this is where we're going to talk about our friend Andrew for a second. Uh, our friend Andrew has done a lot for us recently. Uh, in the way of doing some printing and things like that. Oh yeah, that's um, awesome. One of those, as you may have been, uh, have noticed, is this awesome cup. Uh, Ooh. It's not a Yeti, but it's basically the same thing. And uh, he actually made these for us. Yeah, he made us dope. three in total. I held up four, but three. <laughs> Numbers He made tricky. one for both Will and I as a gift, and one yes. to give away to any of you lucky people. Um, and what we thought we would do with this is on our 500th follower on Instagram. Uh, not to that person, but when we get 500, right, we'll do a post right. and we'll get that shared around and everything. We'll give it some time. Uh, but at 500 followers, we'd like to do a giveaway, including the cup, as well as a few other things like packs, things like that, mm. uh, to go out mm. to some of our some of our followers. Yes, uh, So out there on the ether webs. If you have not already checked out our Instagram, I highly recommend you do so because you will be entered to win that at the 500 mark. At that point. Uh, and so uh, definitely go check it out. We also have Facebook, all that stuff, so check it out there too. But it, it will be posted there as well. But yeah. obviously Instagram's where we're going to be using to pick those winners. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm if excited about uh, that. If you were a good boy or girl, we might uh, restuffing it with some cards, you think? Yeah. I think that's the plan. Go I think we're going to get a few packs in. A few goodies. Yeah, yeah. Maybe pull something neat. Yeah, so uh, we hope that you guys are excited about that. We're yeah. already at right around 440 followers on Instagram. Uh, thanks to you guys, we've actually been building very quickly on Instagram. And Appreciate so we that. would love and to keep that growth up. Heck yeah. Uh, and thanks to you guys, hopefully we'll be able to. So absolutely. Keep in keep in mind that five hundred follower mark. That's a nice round number, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good 500. one. Five hundred. Five uh, hundred. Didn't expect it to go that quickly, to be honest. But I think it's neat. Yeah, it's I, awesome. I like the the Instagram community. I do too. The the magic community. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little sleepy today. <laughs> it's kind of dreary. Why are you sleepy? It's dreary outside. <laughs> I also didn't sleep that much sleep is important you really should have i was up solving the mysteries of the universe did you get the answer that you were looking for well some but none of them are satisfactory ah, okay well wow. maybe tonight back um. to square one <laughs> now tonight i am i am sleeping you're sleeping hard tonight i'm eating some <laughs> some dinner i'm taking a nap naps and dinner are all good things i may or may not have taken a nap already today god yeah Guys, um, <laughs> with a bomb. <laughs> All right. What do you say we get this deck tech thing underway? Uh, before that, we're rushing. We're rushing a little bit. We have one piece of content Sorry. that we always bring you guys. I forgot. And you forgot about it. The and card of the day. Uh, obviously, a random card of the day. We never know what this is going to be until <laughs> the time comes. And three, two, one. Huh. Necromancer's Covenant. This is uh, from fun. Alara Reborn. Yeah. Uh, it's an enchantment for three, one white, and two black. When Necromancer's Covenant comes into play, remove all creature cards in target player's mm. graveyard from the game. Then put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token into play for each card removed this way. 
And also, zombies you control have lifelink. This screams Commander, and yeah. it was actually printed in Commander as well. So yeah, that um, makes sense. <laughs> I don't at six. I don't know that that is impactful enough in any other format. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think probably because I didn't. I did not play standard when this was. I around. really doubt this hit standard. Yeah, it's um, super, it's just too expensive. Exactly, it's super expensive, and there's no guarantee. Like against the control deck, you yeah. get maybe a token. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, although in the right situation, I could see maybe that works. I mean, maybe think about, sideboard. Think about this, man. Oh, okay. What if I'm just gonna mention a deck for no particular reason? What if you were able to get this off against a living end before they got to living end? An interesting choice of decks. I wonder why you brought that up. I just thought of it. It's no, been on I my mean, mind lately. It, and it I just could thought. be good against living end. But, However, but let's, living end goes off on turn three. I was going to say. <laughs> but let's be clear. That couldn't happen. No. I mean, <sighs> this card is not viable in anything other than commander yeah honestly it's great in commander though i will say i think oh it's yeah pretty great. heck yeah for six um, i think is it all opponents or target uh do, do, in, do, target in target but okay. you do have at least three other targets usually uh you know oh, it's yeah. usually a four player format mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you're gonna have your choice of good targets and a lot of i mean creatures are huge in commander obviously they have to be so no. weird right yeah um no i think i think you're totally right yeah it's, i think it's i think that's where it's at its mm -hmm. best for sure yeah that's probably pretty cool yeah um i mean yeah. i like the card it's neat art <laughs> we'll it's a that. rare <laughs> which that's is right. interesting it goes into our we don't our always get rares <laughs> rare um, uh, library but yeah so uh an interesting card but definitely a commander card yeah. necromancer's covenant it's like you want so badly for that to be playable you do it's, it's so one fun, of those cards but... that you're like oh maybe but then mm -mm. no it's mm -mm. just not mm -mm. um all okay. right well an interesting card of the day not a not our worst one for sure Agreed. um <laughs> All right, now, this is Monday. As you guys know, we do our deck techs on Monday, and we like to cycle through formats. We have three formats that we usually cycle oh. through. It's usually modern, then vintage, then legacy, mm -hmm. I believe is the order. Yeah, we kind of go disjointed if you are yeah. weird yeah. and stuff. And we do a little bit of an odd, yeah. But yeah. Uh, here's the deal. Those we, are kind of our favorites, though, would you say? Yeah, I would modern, definitely vintage. say. Yeah. I think so. Um, we did something a little bit different. Normally, we each go out, pick a deck on our own, hmm. Do, do some research and then come back and talk about them. Uh, and that way it's sort of an open thing between us where we just have this discussion. But uh, we sort of revamped a little bit and we thought, hey, let's get you guys involved uh, a little bit more. And let's ask your opinion. What deck do you want to hear us talk about? What yeah. deck do you think is good? What deck do you think would just be funny to talk about on the show? Uh, and you guys responded uh, a with did. a lot of great. comments. Uh, the one that we decided to go with um, is... Good friend of ours on Instagram. I love my MTG, I believe is his username. And we do too, buddy. Yes. Uh, we do too. And what deck did he suggest? Uh, well, if you paid attention before, <laughs> I may have foreshadowed it. I may have death shattered it. It it was Living End. <laughs> oh, the what living a great end deck. deck. Yeah. It is um, cool. It's this deck cool. has gotten, this is actually good timing because it, with Amonkhet, exactly. uh, there have been a lot of renewed faith in... Uh, yeah, it With got living in. It got a big old upgrade. Yeah. A big yeah. sweaty upgrade. <laughs> big sweaty upgrade. It was great. Um and again, I am going to be doing uh a sort of shout out to our friend Andrew who is the one who did the printing on the cups and yes. has been helping us out with a few other things. Mm. Hopefully hopefully some future things that you guys can partake in. Uh but he suggested as part of the stipulation that we do this giveaway uh, that we do a modern liquid metal coating deck. Ooh. Um, and so mm. I did a little research on that and found a very spicy list. Uh, a spicy list. A spicy list. list uh, we should just try to describe the I'm actually really flavors. excited about, yeah. It's spicy. decks and flavors. It's so spicy. It's so spicy. Um, burn decks be spicy. I'm, I'm too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm um, doing that thing. It is a cool deck, but I think we'll lead off with yours. Yeah, let's, let's Sorry, do with that. I Love My MTGs. Yes. I should um, say. So this list, to be specific, uh, was played at the Gatecrashers Anonas tournament. Anonas? <laughs> Anonas? Um, that one. 
It was a modern tournament, um, the tenth of this month, actually. Oh wow! Um, and like Kevin said, it's got a bunch of those Amonkhet juicy cyclers in them, uh, and this actually took first place. Wow! Top eight took first That's place. That's great. Yeah, I wanted to find one that uh, took first. Yeah, because we like winners. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and I feel like it might be a little better constructed. Um, <laughs> and it is. So let's go over it. Uh, so I want to talk about the mana base first. Only runs twenty lands, but that's not too yeah. out of the ordinary for modern. And, no, not at all. That's about normal. Living in really as yeah. well. Uh, so you're looking at one blood crypt, one blood stained mire, three blooming marsh, one cheeky forest, two mountains, overgrown tomb, a stomping ground, two swamps, vernon catacombs, and then three windswept heath and four wooded foothills. So really, nothing in the form of a utility land. It's all either a fetch, yep, or just a mana producing land. land. Yeah, yep, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and I don't believe you've got any main lands either. So yeah, makes sense. Go. Um, it's not. You could say it's kind of like a, oh, it's a pretty basic mana base, but honestly, the the variety is interesting. Mm-hmm. In all of the uh, the targets for your uh, fetch lands, I was particularly confused by windswept heath, why that needed to be included. Because there's no white source. Oh. Just add extra fetches. I guess for forests. But, yeah. I mean. But there's so many. That could also fetch other things. But that's fine. <laughs> I'm not here to critique. Or am I? Uh, <laughs> so let's get into it. What does Living End do? Well, Living End is really sweet. Um, it's a combo deck? Yeah, I mean, I would consider it a combo deck. It's, yeah. Uh, it's I'll let you of, do your... <laughs> It's hard to really pin down because there's not an extensive combo to get. It's really, it's a sort of one card combo. Yeah, you kind of build up. You only to it. actually ever play one card. Well, really, it's two. Technically, you cast one card. Right. Well, okay, fair. But you do a bunch of little things, and then you just combo off, and hopefully you've got the game on board. Yeah. So basically, it works. Surprise with Living End. Living End uh, being a sweet card that reads is a sorcery. Living End is black, suspend three, and its suspend cost is two colorless and two black mana. And it should be noted, it doesn't have an actual mana cost. Right. This is the only way you can technically cast this card, I guess yes. you could say. <laughs> uh, and that's important. Yes. Put a pin in that. No yeah, mana yeah. cost. Uh, it says each player removes all creature cards in his or her graveyard from the game, then sacrifices all creatures he or she controls, then puts into play all cards he or she removed this way. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it can be. It's a sweeper, and then it puts guys back. Yeah. Well, really, it takes guys out, sweeps, and then puts those guys. What? No, anyway, yeah. not to get nitpicky, but <laughs> you understand. You see what I'm saying. So that is the namesake and the engine of the deck, and it is dope. So, <laughs> in your minds, you're thinking, how do we get creatures in the yard, man? Yeah. Without milling myself. Well, I'll tell you, audience, and oh boy. I'm, I sound kind of silly, but I'm really excited <laughs> about this. Uh, especially with all of the Amonkhet cards. So cycling is the bread and butter. Yeah. It's how you, it's how you do everything. It's great. Can I interject very quickly? I'd love you to. I just want to mention that I love that there are decks that function based off one core mechanic. Yeah. Um, so like most decks are like, I need a value creature here. I need a counter spell here. I need a removal spell here. This is a deck solely based on a singular mechanic. If yeah, you really well, much. two mechanics technically, but okay. like it sort of so operates much. off of that one, the yeah, cycling and it's, mechanic. And like, it's how cool is that strength. that you can build a deck that's competitively viable and that wins apparently? That you know that yeah. is just based off of a singular mechanic that you wouldn't think is enough to win a game. Yeah, but it that, tends and that, to be. And that's true. It's, you know what I mean? It's a mechanic that exists as a like utility kind of yeah. to add variety to cards. But it honestly, adds less downside to a card, but in this instance, it adds 100% so win upside. to the deck. Like, so much that in a a top tier, would you say top tier? I would, I think. Is uh Living in. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say it's on the lower end of tier well, one. Well, yeah, but it's but definitely yeah. not like living in doesn't do poorly at most tournaments. No, it does pretty well, I would say. So in a 
good deck, it runs plenty of commons. Yeah. Simply because they cycle. Yeah. And that's awesome. And that's exactly how you're going to get your guys in the yard is you see you draw Archfiend of Ifnir, mm -hmm. which you play a core set of. You cycle those bad boys away. Yep. Later. Uh, now you've got a 5-4 flyer in the yard who's going to come out real soon and do some damage, uh, which is great. So let's go over the creatures as a package so we can talk about them. Again, play set of, of the Archfiend. Two Deadshot Minotaurs. So these cycle for one. Mm -hmm. Their mana cost is five. We'll kind of disregard all that, though. Uh, it says when Deadshot Minotaur comes into play, it deals three damage to target creature with flying. Again, that kind of doesn't matter because their board's yeah. clear at that point. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully. If they do, should be known with living in. If they yeah. have any cards in the graveyard, they any creature cards in the graveyard, they do also get those back. That's true. Um, so it's not 100% a sweeper, I guess. Right. But... But yeah. you're not doing much to get rid of their cards before this no, goes off. You so. kind of want their creatures to stick around as long yes. as they can. That'd be the that'd be the hope. Now, yeah. if you're playing this against Reanimator, mm, nope, nope, you, nope. You shouldn't do that. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, you wouldn't do too well. Uh, it runs a playset of Desert Ceridon. Yeah. Again, cycles for one red. It is a six Desert four. Ceridon. Yeah, it's limited. <laughs> That's great. It's yeah. great and limited. It's awesome. Uh, three Fulminator Mage for little utility in a creature. It says sacrifice Fulminator Mage, destroy target, non-basic land. Um, land destruction for three is pretty sweet. And it's also good that you can main board this mm -hmm. in a modern format with Tron being a fairly prominent deck. Um, yeah. You're able to destroy a Tron land and then still get the Fulminator Mage back mm -hmm. to either do some damage or destroy more Tron lands. So right. it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a great card. Um, it's why it's printed at rare. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Horror of the Broken Lands. A cycle for one black. It is a 4 4. It says whenever you cycle or discard another card, it gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Absolute all star in this deck. <sighs> it's great. It's so good. Uh, he gets monstrous quickly. Yeah. Um, it gives you more long game after mm -hmm. the living in goes off mm -hmm. because you can get extra damage. You know, things like that where sure. you couldn't do that before I'm on Cat. Yeah. So it's very true. Um, and you have. There is like a window. That once Living End goes off, I'm imagining, I've not played this myself. So Living End goes off, mm -hmm. you're staring at your board of guys. You can't swing yet, so there's a turn where they kind of get to mess with you. Yeah. So it's a little bit hairy, but yeah. if you can make it through to the next turn and swing in, you... the th Yeah, like, so good. the matchup where this becomes really terrible is against a control deck. Uh, specifically mm. because one they have counters so they can counter your cascade card which we haven't talked about you'll get to in a sec but um they can just counter or they have sweepers mm. and so if you had yes, to go off turn four one. turn five instead of the turn three which you're shooting for um mm. they have the open mana at least to do a sweeper yeah and so if they true. sweep your board you're not in the best place it's rough. Um, um, so that's worth noting. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Um, you do, again, you could live again again. Yeah, absolutely. And still get those guys back. Yeah. But Kevin's absolutely right. Um, it's very easily tampered with, mm -hmm. I'd say, right? With a lot of options. Um, there in this deck are four monstrous Cerebids. Carabid? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> cycles for one hybrid mana, one uh, black or red. Uh, it is a 4-4. Four, four. Another big guy. Three Simeon Spirit Guides, which I love. Yeah, um, such a great include. Yeah, it turns into basically a free mana to cycle stuff with. Mm -hmm. um, on turn one, you could cycle a few guys. Uh, four Street Wraith, kind of the same theme mm -hmm. with that uh, Spirit Guide. You can just cycle by paying two life, which is great. Yeah. Uh, so turn one, you could effectively cycle three things. Yeah. Right. And three guys in the yard on turn one is pretty good for yeah. this deck. Yeah. Um, and then there's one twisted abomination to kind of fix the mana. So it uh, is a five three four six with uh, the ability to pay one black to regenerate it, or it has swamp cycling for two two colorless. Now that's a little different version of cycling. Uh, we talked a little bit about it before we started recording, um, where they intentionally made it to fix mana. Yeah, it's cycle fetch sort of a thing. Um, and that's kind of nice, but it's only a one of just yeah. And just in case. this is what we were talking about beforehand: is is basic land cycling of a specific yeah. kind better than just general cycling, just yeah. drawing a card? And what we sort of determined is it it comes down to the situation, right? Like totally. there are absolutely situations where a card like 
the abomination is exactly what you need because right. you're down on lands you need that um but more often times i think you'll actually just want the draw not only yeah. because that, because technically it can get you to your answers faster mm -hmm. it also can technically get to your lands i mean if you have a land on exactly. top you get it so um it i think is better to just have general cycling yeah but in the situation there are absolutely situations where you just need a land and so yeah. that's exactly why this is in there for sure yeah um i mean his body's substantial as well at five yeah. uh so he's a great include but you see most of your deck with this yeah uh because everyone cycles for so cheap it's it just kind of you just run through it yeah as quickly it as happens you can. quick um so th those are all the creatures those are your guys uh instants and sorceries you've got demonic dread now what's pause so let's talk about cascade for a second the second mechanic oh, you such need. a broken mechanic it's so good it's so cool i wish they would print more cards with cascade but they, they never, never will, will again <laughs> because it's too freaking good so <laughs> cascade if you don't know and i'm about to blow your mind cascade says, you like free stuff <laughs> would you like more stuff so you cast a spell with cascade let's say blood braid elf for example would you yeah i think most that's of you a good know. example if you don't two colorless one red one green yep he's a three two I he is with haste and with cascade yes cascade saying when you cast this card what is it exile the top cards of your library until you find a card with less fewer mana costs with less mana a less cost. cmc right. than blood braid elf right. so three two or one or zero technically True, true, <laughs> important. And then you get to play that for free. You yep. get to cast that without you paying You just get cost. to play it. Actually, I don't think you have the option. I think you just play it. Uh, right? Yeah, I think you do kind of just yeah. have to. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm not either. Yeah, you just play it. You, uh, it's yeah. just free things. Yeah. Ooh, That's why um, for any of you legacy players out there, Shardless Bug is a thing mm -hmm. because Shardless Agent is, it has Cascade. If you play, I guess, Commander, Maelstrom Wander. Oh, buddy. Double Cascade I seems think, pretty good. I <laughs> like mean, Yidris is... Yidris is also quite amazing. He gives everything Cascade. Yeah. Um, that seems fair. Yeah. Cascade Yidris is, is awesome. 100% a broken mm -hmm. uh, broken mechanic, and which will never be printed again. <laughs> Except maybe in Commander stuff, I guess, because it yeah. was. But uh, I, just, I love it so much. Cascade yeah. is so fun to play with. It's so cool. Not against. <laughs> no. It's like it makes a bad situation instantly worse. Like, whenever <laughs> yes. someone plays a Blood Braid Elf, you're never excited, but then... Well, the thing about it thing. is it opens you up to possibility, in a general sense, it opens mm -hmm. you up to possibilities, not in Living End, but well, say you cast a Blood Braid Elf, and you're like, okay, they have a good creature, but I can deal with it, and then they just get an Abrupt Decay for free. Just Abrupt Decay a thing of yours, or a... bolt you for three and then swing for three. If you're at six, that's a problem. You, you like, could say that. You there's say that. so many situations that Cascade can dig you out of so easily. Yeah. Um. That being said, it is usually a varied mechanic. Uh, you don't right. always know what you're going to get. However, so in, in this living instance, end, <laughs> um, so let's talk about that mana cost. So your your Cascade, uh, I guess sources really are three demonic dreads and four violent outbursts. So the reason it's not four and four is pretty simple. Um, Demonic Dread needs a creature to go off. You says, have to be able to have a creature on the field yeah. to target. And you very rarely play a creature yeah. if you can play Violent Outburst. Yeah. You would much rather just start cascading. Mm -hmm. So essentially this is more like a living end tutor in this deck because the two cascade uh, sources are each CMC3. Mm -hmm. Living end technically has none, but everything else in the deck is more than three yeah so the only thing you can cast with cascade legally is living in yes and that's all you're gonna get so out of curiosity how mm -hmm. many living ends does this deck actually run only three only three mm -hmm. but that being said with the cascade cards you essentially have 11 yeah yeah 11 copies of living end in your deck which is a little over a sixth of your deck right so yeah <laughs> you you will touch this card a lot <laughs> you'll get it <laughs> if you don't draw it it's just gonna be there man and i think that's a really key part of this deck and why it's so competitive is because it's very consistent yes it um, gets to its engine faster yeah, than most decks I'd it say. does it does um so you also run one carry zev's expertise <clears throat> for fun 
uh, <laughs> which is a sorcery from Aether Revolt that says gain control of target creature or vehicle until end of turn. Tab it, it gains haste. It's one of those I take your thing cards. Uh, and then it also says you may cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. What could that be? Only living end. Yeah, exactly. That, so this is another one of the cards that sort of makes living end actually even more viable than it was before. This was obviously yeah. a deck before these sets came out, but mm-hmm. a lot of the times you would get living in stuck in your hand. You'd have mm-hmm. to either suspend it and then just wait and hope you get it, or you probably would just lose. Yeah. This basically negates that for the most part, right? Like you're yeah. going to be able to just cast it from your hand using the expertise, which means it's no longer a dead card in your hand when right. you draw it, Now, um, which is awesome. This is a one of because more often than not, you will be able to cascade into a living end yeah, absolutely. than just have to draw it. Um, because yes, you've got seven chances essentially to be able to cast it for free. Yeah. Um, and with all the cycling, with all the draw stuff, you will find it. Yep. Um, I mean, if not, you just forgot to bring it. Like That's the only <laughs> way you wouldn't see it. Uh, so yeah, horribly consistent, horribly yeah. fun. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the sideboard for a second Okay. before we get in there. Uh, it's running an anger of the gods. Aggro control map or aggro matchups, right? Not control. <laughs> no, I, th- I think this is interesting that it's not running sweltering suns, because that you, is a good point. You could also cycle sweltering suns. That is a little interesting. Well, mm-hmm. actually, no. Uh, anger exiles creatures, doesn't it? Correct. That's why. Never mind. Um, yeah, because if they hit their yes. graveyard, they get them back. So that's bad. That's true. That makes sense. Never mind. Moving on, um, <laughs> uh, two beasts within. Uh, so, with this being in Jun colors, you would think that you would get access to some removal and stuff, which is true. You could play any number of uh, bolts, fatal push, yeah, your dismember, doom blades, whatever. Well, the dismember is actually a good one to put in. It could be, yeah, because yeah. it doesn't have the problem. But, but it's you don't... less effective. You don't want to put any of those cards in your deck because they cost less than three. Yeah. You, this works so well because you can simply play your stuff for Well, free. and the thing about Beast Within also is if you Beast Within... So say you are about to go off right. with Living End next turn or something. You right. know you're going to get it. So what you do is you Beast Within a land or something of theirs. If they've got a creature or something that's problematic, yeah. that's fine. But right. you Beast Within probably a land and you... Give them a 3 3, which no longer matters because you're going to live in it away. It's just going to blow up anyway. And it's a token, so it doesn't hit the graveyard. Yeah. So they don't it's, get it back. It's the perfect removal, really, for this deck. Yeah. And I like Beast Within because removal in green is hard to come by. It is. Um, it just stinks that they get a 3 3. Grr. Eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Not, Not in this deck. deck. Not in this deck. Um, so it also runs three Leyline of Sanctity and three Leyline of the Void. Yeah. Um, so good. Yeah. I mean, these are in a lot of sideboards, I feel like, um, and that can kind of make me a little like itchy. I don't Wonder like it why. as much. So this can't hard play Leyline. Cannot hard cast it of Sanctity specifically. Excuse me, Leyline of Sanctity. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, Leyline of the, the Void. It can. Yes. Yeah. No, and I understand. And we actually talked about this before the episode. So the recording. It comes down to. You want it in your opening hand, because then you just get to yeah. play for free, and it's great. But if I don't have Leyline of Sanctity in my hand, and I've sided it in because I'm against Burn, yep. or I'm against Aggro, something I'd need this in, okay, I can mulligan. And if I get this card, I'm in a really good spot. Yeah. If I don't get this card, I can mulligan, <laughs> and then I'm in a terrible spot. And then if I still do yeah. not get this that's I, so the question arises how low do you go on your mulligans right like how good is it to keep mulliganing down to four three two cards just to get a ley line and if you don't get it you're done right? i will say i think against burn yeah. i'm probably willing to mulligan a lot more oh yeah absolutely because burn simply i mean ley line of, of sanctity you can't be the targets of spells or right. ability which is fantastic uh and kills burn yeah completely um unless they've got an enchantment hate um <laughs> which they will i mean mm-hmm. you know uh so yeah <laughs> and if you listen to professional magic players talk or casters talk you know that the more you mulligan the l- like the lower your win 
percentage yes extensively usually it's, and it's insane the jump from six to five is an abs- significantly less yeah it's, yeah. A, it's absurd that's why if you can help it don't go to five no i mean that's why mulliganing it, isn't like hey oh, i'm just man. gonna continuously do no of course not like you start with less cards of course, you're less likely to win of I mean, course it's, <laughs> it's worse but you don't i don't think a lot of players understand really the like how critical it is going down from six yeah to five yeah uh, it doesn't really seem as bad if you simply can't play your hand at six, but understand the risk of five. It's I mean, what you have to weigh of, when you do mulligan, this is sort of talk all of its own, but mm. maybe this would be a good Sunday, filler fun day, but something for mulliganing, mm. like if you know you're not going to be able to play anything for a few turns, okay, you should probably mulligan, right? Yeah. Like if you've got a four drop in your hand and then six lands, yeah oh, maybe yeah. mulligan so. but if you've got like three lands and then like a three drop along with a few four drops where does where does the line begin like right. where do you think now's the time to mulligan because you may have two turns of absolutely nothing but if you're running a low curve deck that becomes not as mm-hmm. bad because you're you have that's more true. hits to hit on turn one and two so it kind of doesn't matter that's true being on the draw also matters you know you get yeah. There, I'm more likely to mulligan if I'm on the draw because Likewise. I'm going to get a card back. And yeah, mm-hmm. you still are on the back foot, but it feels a little less bad. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, um, and you do get that scry, which is nice. The scry is um, nice. And it's also good to point out that in Living End, mulliganing isn't as bad because most kinda of... kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> most of what you're doing your early few turns are <laughs> just drawing cards. So yeah. specifically from the drawbacks of mulliganing, not too terrible, but it's still not a great place to be. Yeah. Um, and if you, it is absolutely possible to keep mulliganing and mm-hmm. never hit the ley line, yeah. and then you're in a really bad spot. Yeah. Um, but you know, well, that's a risk you take with living end. That's true. Uh, it is kind of a, there are, it's a very good deck, but then very key flaws. Fatal it's like flaws, hit or miss, hundred percent. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that. Um, to round up the 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 sideboard real quick, three ingot truers, two street maws. It uses um evoke as well to get some utility artifact and creature hate yeah so living end uh fantastically consistent deck yeah uh really strong fun to play yeah fun to play cool guys that's all i got kev i like living in thank you i love my mtg for that suggestion yeah appreciate Uh, that we really appreciate that um yeah so uh i'm gonna thank andrew again for pointing this deck out um so modern liquid metal coating uh what is liquid metal coating does anybody know um uh yeah it's that stuff that they put on the pipes when they make the where to where to forego together no okay so (laughs) liquid metal coating it's a two cast artifact Hmm. that has the ability you can tap it Hmm. turn another permanent into an artifact that's it that's what it does Man, how could you build a deck around that, Kev? Right? Okay, so here's what this deck really does. It turns everything your opponents control Mm -hmm. and that you control in some instances into artifacts Okay. and then destroys those artifacts. Wait, what? That's it. So main board, this has three nature's claims, two smelts, four ancient grudges, and two destructive revelries. I need one more finger to count them all. (laughs) So it's got tons of artifact hate, yeah. uh, which is exactly what it needs, because if it's going to be turning things into artifact, it artifacts, it needs to be able to blow them up. This does it's it true. well. Um, there are a lot of different lists with this. There's some budget lists, because this is sort of a rogue build, un- understandably. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but it is a decent build, the one that I found at least, that feels more mid-rangey. Uh, it's okay. a little more, you know, it has the combo in it. And it is focused on the combo, but it also builds off of that in different ways, mm-hmm. which is really, really cool. Most of the decks I saw were like literally liquid metal coating and then just artifact hate. <laughs> Costs like 20 bucks, but won't win many games. Um, uh, well, yeah. So not. let's go through some creatures first. Um, creatures, it runs, this list at least, runs four birds of paradise and two wall of roots, uh, usually to ramp you, get the coating out quickly and be able to start destroying those artifacts as quickly as possible. Mm. Uh, it also runs two Snapcasters, uh, which you're able to pull those those uh, artifact hate cards back uh, if need be. Uh, for Tarmogoyf, that takes a 
huge upside in this deck because you're going to be hitting stuff yeah. into the graveyard. They're not actually artifacts, so they're going to be of different types. Uh, if you need to blow up a land to to activate Tarmogoyf, just turn it into a, an artifact and kill it, and then play yeah. Tarmogoyf. Like That's you can perfect. do that. Um, and then also to Master of Ethereum, which is a huge, huge bomb in this deck. Yeah, um, it adds another facet to uh, this deck that some lists <laughs> did not have. So yeah, it, it just was, gives it, it nice. an incredible finisher. Uh, if you don't know, it's Master of Ethereum is it gets plus plus X plus X basically, where X is the number of artifacts in play. Uh, I believe that yep. you control specifically, and it also gives all of your artifact creatures plus one plus one. Um, yeah. So it boosts you a little bit, and there's actually cards in here that turn all non non creature artifacts into creatures with uh, power and toughness equal to their CMC. Oh. Um, and so you get more and more of these, and so it actually is pretty awesome. Yeah, that card really bad. quick is March of Machines. It runs as a one of. Okay. Um, so as an enchantment. Yeah. I so think I want to. That's the creature base that gives it that sort of mid range feel, right? Like yeah. Karmagoyf. Yeah, master of it those are more mid-rangey style cards yeah they say. really hit their stride yeah. the later yeah. the game progresses um and you also do get some ramp which is always good well, um and this ooh. is in teamer colors by the way yes the yeah. good old red blue green yeah if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah um but uh we already talked about the artifact hate in the way of instants and sorceries but it also does run four bolts for any problematic creatures early uh, it also gives you some burn for longevity. If you're in red and you play modern, you yeah, you play bolt. bolt. There's bolt. no reason not to. Um, it runs a one of muddle of the mixture, uh, usually to transmute for something, but it also is a counter to an instant or sorcery. Uh, to fabricate, to find huh. your nice. Uh, nice. liquid metal coating or any other artifact that you need, uh, it pulls an artifact from your deck and puts it into your hand. Artifact it's sort tinker. of like a fixed tinker. Yeah. Um, if you think it. of it that way uh, from mirrored in block I believe back in the day um, and then as artifacts it runs the four liquid metal coating obviously and then it also has a one of and I don't know how to say the first part of this so I'm just going to say it's a six mana artifact okay. <laughs> uh, that makes everything else artifacts literally wow. everything um, so you just start blowing everything up uh, it's, it's nice. pretty awesome uh, it makes other uh, cards in your deck that you have not played yet it makes them colorless it also means that you can tap any mana to play them wow and so okay. it's it's there's a one of because it's a six mana call that's what you're kind of ramping to it's a little on the yeah. high end but it is actually very very good it yeah it makes this awesome. deck tick very quickly um as far as lands go it runs 21 20 to 21 mm -hmm. lands um and it does have its normal you know smothering of fetches mm -hmm. normal stuff <laughs> The only real utility land is a one of Academy Ruins, uh, which this is obviously the sense. deck for it. Yeah, uh, it lets you pull artifacts back from your graveyard. So if that you blow sense. them up, or if your opponents blow them up, you're able to get them back. Uh, which you're obviously going to get a lot of artifact hate cited in against you, and so you will need that Academy Ruins. Definitely, um, it is very very good. So. As we said, this is a mid-range style uh, liquid metal coating deck. Generally, you want to ramp, get some creatures out, and then start blowing stuff up. Uh, but that is the whole point of the deck. And then mm -hmm. you're able to capitalize on the artifacts and then just beat in with Master of Ethereum or yeah. Tarmogoyf or anything like that. Yeah, so, what have you. Very cool. Um, very quickly, we'll talk about the sideboard. Uh, it does run negate and remand as control variants. Nice. Uh, so if you want to lose some of that creature base and get some control aspects in there, you're able to do that. Uh, it runs an anger of the gods. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, aggro decks. Uh, be able to kill them. Uh, that's yeah, basically all you nasty, need to do. I mean, um, you just need to last a few turns, and so anger helps you do that. If they're mm -hmm. diversifying threats, this deck isn't quite as good. Because it's sort of sure. a one-hit wonder. You know, you tap the liquid metal once and then shoot something. That's kind of all you've got per turn until you get a few of them out. Yeah. And so, well, or until you get some of these other artif everything's an artifact, you know. But, <clears throat> excuse me, until that point, you need to anger of the gods. Makes uh, sense, makes sense. It does run a batter skull, which is just oh, awesome. Heck yeah, I mean, batter skull's great. Yeah, batter skull's so amazing. <laughs> Uh, Crumble to Dust against Tron and other land-based decks is fantastic. Um, Malakir, I believe, or Scapeshift. <sighs> I'm um, trying not to yawn this whole sorry time. Sorry to bore you, jeez. No, it's not you. 
Keep, keep going. Good with friends. Keep um, going with that sideboard kid. <laughs> Jace Architect of Thought is an interesting include, in my huh. opinion. Um, gives is, you some really. card draw, things like that. Uh, Karanos do extra damage. <laughs> Uh, and then roast to deal with anything like uh, Tassiger or something like that, where you Heck need yeah. to deal exactly five damage. Yeah, because Tassiger is kind of a problem. Tassiger is because Grixis Death Shadow is a thing, and Grixis Delver and things like that. Really, anything Grixis, you run Tassiger. Yeah, he's and, so good. Yeah, he's just insane. So, um, this I will say is one of the as I kind of already mentioned this is the better list of the ones that I saw hmm. um, there are a lot of terrible lists with this deck yeah um, I mean you get kind of those variances with rogue decks right you yeah. get the ones that people throw together as a fun brew just cause yeah and then things that can get competitive a lot of lists can be tweaked and yeah. this is a really good this is evolution. the best that I found and it's mm -hmm. very solid I think it's not the best thing in the world I don't think it's it's definitely not tier one but no it's, it's got not even holes. played anywhere right. but uh -huh. it is just a fun deck and um if you have the money to put into it which it is like an eight nine hundred dollar deck this list specifically Oof. uh is pretty expensive but that's what you would normally pay for a modern deck so I mean, it's not above average to by too much um again man you're killing me i need some coffee you need to get something. Um, but yeah, so I actually really like this deck. So Andrew, huge thank you. Uh, we, we've we been talking about this deck for a little bit before, yeah. and uh, we found this list. Andrew and I found it, actually, and I sent oh, it to nice. him. It was it was pretty interesting. Nice. So <laughs> He this... said he ran it in standard. He ran Liquid Metal okay. in standard back in the day. That's cool, because this, this feels like, to me, a deck that is sneaky. Yeah. If a you're not prepared to play against it, which you won't be, <laughs> no, probably most of not. the time you will not be. No, and b if I guess you just can play into it poorly, like if yeah. it's a deck that would counter well, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, man. Yeah, That's interesting list. Deck. Interesting fun list. Deck. But um, thank you again, Andrew, and thank you. I love my MTG for the suggestions this week. Um, again. Next week is Vintage. We're going to be posting on all of our social media outlets, so we want you guys to let us know what Vintage decks you want us to, yeah. to do a deck tech on, and we'll we'll probably pick whichever one gets the most upvotes or whichever one gets the most likes. Sure. Uh, if there's no clear winner, uh, we'll just pick one, and we'll just do a fun one. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of you guys will get a shout-out, and uh, ooh, ooh. we will be tagging I Love My MTG in our Instagram post on Monday, which is yeah, today. You'll see it. Totally, it's today. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we'll tag you in that and give you a little bit of a shout out. But again, thank you both for those Heck suggestions. Yeah. We yeah. really These appreciate cool. them. Um, anytime <clears throat> you guys contribute to the conversation, yeah, it, it, it makes us feel fulfilled exactly. as creators, right? Exactly. Uh, we do want this to be community based. And so you guys helped yeah. make that happen. And you guys yeah, have been yeah. great about doing that so far. So we appreciate it. Uh, hopefully it continues. But agreed. Kev, we got some cracker packs to handle. There's one more segment, my man. Um, so as you guys know, we are on the hunt for our goal cards, mine being Gideon of the Trials and Combat Celebrant. We're still in Amon Ket for a little while until it all, you know, boils. Um,. <laughs> So yeah, we're trying to find some uh, some value there. Oh well, I I didn't get Gideon of the Trials. I got Bounty of the Luxa. Okay, I actually cool card. love this card. Um, it uh, is an enchantment for two, a green and a, a blue. I don't love it, but it's good. Um, I'll say that. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all flood counters from Bounty of Luxa. If no counters were removed this way, put a flood counter on it and draw a card. Otherwise, add one colorless, one green, and one blue to your mana pool. Um, a pretty yeah. cool, pretty cool rare. I don't know. Yes, it's not like good it. in limited. Uh, it's just not fast enough. I don't think. Um, it it can be. Um, I think it can be as they build around, but it's, it's just it's kind of a risk to first pick that. Yeah. Right. Because it doesn't outright get you the win. Where you know, first pick, second pick, people are taking like yeah, you know, big guys. They're taking yeah. their um, oh, I blanked on the name. The sandworms, I'll just say. Greater sandworm? Yeah, sure. Something like that. River server, whatever it is. <laughs> river server. Hey, hey. Oh, look at that. Open Weird. river server. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't outright get you to yeah, the win. Yeah. Uh, it's still an it's engine. It's a cool card. Yeah. yeah, it is an engine. Um, and imagine two of these guys. That would be awesome. But I just, I, it's not a first pick for me, especially when I have 
Most of my packs are terrible, but I have a scaled behemoth. Heck yeah, and man. And this is a 6-7 for 6 in green, <laughs> which is a lot, but it's limited, and you need a bomb. And it's just oh, a hexproof 6-7. <laughs> Dude, it's... Hexproof is, like, the best mechanic in limited, so... Um, it's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, most um, of the time. Most of the time, it's pretty great. And so I would 100% first pick this. Other cards that I like that are not definitely not first pickable. Manticore of the Gauntlet, I think, is pretty good uh, mm -hmm. in a red deck. Supply Caravan and Query Hauler are all are both decent. Yeah. Um, and then Takrop Elite is a card that I've actually been happy with. It's not at all first pickable, but in a go wide strategy, it's pretty great. Um, it gets you in for a couple extra points of damage usually, so I like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, Scaled Behemoth is the pick for me. What about you? Sir, let's talk about my rare. I didn't get uh, Combat Celebrant. Surprise. <laughs> uh, I got Prepare to Fight. Uh, untapped target creature. It gets plus two, plus two, and gains life until end of turn. That is Prepare. And then Fight is target creature. You control fights target creature and opponent controls. That's an interesting card. Yeah, I mean, it's it's green's removal, right? I mean, that's well, yeah. I mean, it is, and it's also it's a pretty so great combat trick. It is, yes, white. it's a great combat trick. Um, it's not never I don't, first pick combat no, I don't trick. Think it's first pickable. <laughs> uh, I don't suggest that to anybody, even my enemies. Um, <laughs> And yeah, my whole pack isn't awesome. Yeah, I've got Cancel, which in Limited is a much better card than anything. <laughs> I mean... It sucks everywhere else. Yeah. So sorry. No, 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 it does. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the worst counter spell. It's definitely, not again, the worst, first pick. Well. So I, my two choices are Exemplar of Strength, which is really solid. Yes. And Trial of good. Ambition. Um, Both great cards. Yeah. Wow. Trial of Ambition being... One of the only ways mm, to kill Scaled Behemoth true uh <laughs> and like ridiculously like i don't know it's great i'm sorry i'm it's very good i'm stuck between these guys but exemplar has got to be my pick i think i'd pick exemplar yeah. uh, it, being in limited you're looking at creatures pretty highly yeah and this is one of the premier uh green uncommons yeah i would say i mean it's just fantastic it's hard so. to not it's hard um, to ignore them um do you know yeah. if this is one of the um what are they called? The the cycle of uncommons that kind of like exemplifies what the color is trying to do in the set. Yes, it is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it's very good. It's a hundred percent the first pick in yeah, that pack. I think. I think it's great. So uh, trial of ambition being a very close second. Yeah, I would say that's not wheeling, but I wish it would. Yeah, it definitely it's would fantastic. not. But um, awesome. So still <sighs> on the hunt for our gold cards though. This has been a yeah. long time searching for these gold cards we're, that's all I'm saying. Uh, we're almost through our box man yeah we are we uh gotta be talking to grand slam again a huge shout out to grand slam for sponsoring this segment yes, um you guys they've are awesome thank done you done a lot to help us as well uh and the crackback segment being one of those mm -hmm. they sponsor this every oh, yeah. week and so, or every episode not every week we do four episodes a week here at eight results <laughs> um <laughs> but we, we do schedule. hugely appreciate it yeah. uh links for their website as well as, as well as their Facebook are in the description. So check them out. Uh, give them a follow. Give them a shout out. Go hang out with them. Yeah, they're great they're guys. Great guys. They're great guys. Yeah. Uh, and um, gals? I don't know if any ladies work there. No. Oh, no ladies work there as of guys. now. Um, great guys. But they used to, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Anyway. Bring this up. Um, it is anyway. a fantastic hard shot. Yeah, it is. It go is. Check so it go out. check them out. Um, and I think that's going to be it for today. We do want to mention that today we, we will be posting on our social media a question of the week. Um, Ooh, get this is something excited. We're, yeah, we're trying to start building the community a little bit more we and asking you guys a little bit more. Yeah, and so um, I think what we're going to be doing every Monday is posting these questions of the week. Uh, I believe last week we might have missed it. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we kind of yeah. we kind of forgot. It was we, a hectic week yeah, for we, us, though. It was rough, uh, yeah. but we do uh, encourage you guys to answer those and uh, hopefully get some good responses. And we'd like to talk about those probably on the filler fun day. Yeah, maybe. that's weird. Um, and so yeah, we will be posting that uh, today. So Stay check it out. Tuned. Comment uh, your answer to whatever it happens yeah. to be. We don't actually know what it'll be yet. We um, have not picked. We have not picked. So do you want to pick right now? No, that's probably. For the I best. don't. <laughs> I make bad decisions when I'm super tired. Yeah, you really do. Um, <laughs> I can stay up another hour. 
<gasps> no, no. But Don't um, go to sleep. With that, guys, uh, <laughs> Will needs to go to bed, and uh, I need to go play some Vintage Cube because it is up on MTGO right now. So well, uh, I oh. think we're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. This has been the Modern Deck Tech Day. That's a uh, fun we really appreciate it. Look forward to next week's Deck Techs and uh, next episode, which is coming out Thursday, right? Yes. Yes, yes it is. That's when we do things. That's when we do things. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. I think we're going to get out of here. It's My so name is Kevin. It's Will. And this has been It Resolves. That's us.